This is the first of two talks about the paper Thin Links and Conway Spheres that I wrote together with my collaborators Artem Kotelsky and Liam Watson and that we put on archive recently. A link to the preprint is in the description below. I'd like to start with a toy example to illustrate the kind of problems that we study in this paper. Consider the 2 minus 3 pretzel tangle. This is an example of a Conway tangle, an embedding of two intervals into the closed three ball such that the endpoints of the two intervals lie on the boundary of the three ball. We usually consider Conway tangles up to isotopy, so the two strands can wiggle around inside the three ball without passing through each other, while the four tangle ends stay fixed on the boundary. Now take two copies of this tangle and glue the boundary spheres together along some map phi such that the four endpoints of one tangle are identified with four endpoints of the other. This way we obtain a knot, or a link, L, in the three sphere. Of course, there are many such maps phi, and so there are many links that you can obtain via this construction. For example, phi might connect the tangle ends like this, gluing, so to speak, the back of the tangle on the left to the front of the tangle on the right. Here is another example, where the map phi corresponds to adding some twists to the tangle ends before gluing the tangles together. But no matter how you glue the tangles together, the resulting link L satisfies the following property. The reduced Kovana homology of the link L is thin if and only if the Knopfler homology of L is thin. Let me try to unpack this statement. Kovanov and Knopfler homology are homology theories for knots and links. With any given knot or link, L in S3, each of them associates a finite dimensional bigraded vector space, which we denote by kh tilde of L and hfk hat of L. The original definition of Kovanov homology, about 20 years ago, goes back to Kovanov, and it is purely combinatorial slash algebraic. Knopfler homology, due to Oshlad and Zabo, and independently Jacob Rasmussen, was originally defined analytically, although by now there also exist pure, purely algebraic reformulations. In this talk, I will treat these two homology theories as black boxes, and only work with their formal properties. In fact, in this talk, we will only consider these theories as singly graded homology theories. More precisely, we will only consider the so-called delta grading, which is a linear combination of the usual bigradings, for those of you that are familiar with these. So we will consider Kovanov homology as a direct sum of vector spaces that are indexed by the integers, and the same for Knopfler homology. We will now call a graded vector space thin if it is supported only in a single grading. That is, if V delta is zero for all but a single grading delta. So our baby theorem says that the Kovana homology of a link obtained by gluing two copies of the two minus three pretzel tangle together is supported in a single delta grading, if and only if the same is true for Knopfler homology. Note that the homology theories depend, at least a priori, on the field of coefficients. In fact, in 2019, Shimakovich found a knot whose Kovana homology over the field of rational numbers is thin, but not over the field of two elements. So in Kovana homology, the coefficients matter. On the other side, for Knopfler homology, it is not even known whether it contains any torsion at all, so it is not clear whether thinness in Knopfler homology depends on coefficients. We will work over the field of two elements. So let me include this in the statement of our baby theorem. We show that for any link obtained by gluing two copies of the two minus three pretzel tangles together, the reduced Kovanov homology with Z mod two coefficients is thin, if and only if the Knopfler homology with Z mod two coefficients is thin. What evidence is there that something like this might be true? Well, Firstly, the Kovanov and Knopfler homology of many knots with a small number of crossings are thin. For example, it is known that this is true for alternating links, 
and more generally quasi-alternating links. So there are a large number of links for which the notions of thinness coincide for both homology theories. Secondly, there exists a spectral sequence due to Nathan Dowlin from Kavana homology to Knopfler homology, and this spectral sequence preserves the delta gradient. So if you have a link whose Kavana homology is thin, then the same is true for its Knopfler homology. So that would imply one direction of our baby theorem. However, Dowlin constructed his spectral sequence over the field of rational numbers. We prove this baby theorem over Z mod 2 coefficients, so we cannot use his spectral sequence. The reason why I call our theorem a baby theorem is because it holds in much greater generality. Namely, you can ask what happens when we replace the 2 minus 3 pretzel tangle by a different tangle. Or, more generally, what happens when we combine two different Conway, tang Conway tangles? And the answer is that very often the theorem still holds. This will become uh, apparent in the second talk, where I will explain how to prove this baby theorem for the 2 minus 3 pretzel tangle. My goal for this talk is to provide some context for the ideas that go into the proof of this result. We start by considering the following simplification of the problem. Let us replace the 2 minus 3 pretzel tangle by a trivial tangle and see what happens. So we take two copies of the trivial tangle and glue them together using some map phi identifying the two boundary spheres. Observe that a link obtained by gluing any two Conway tangles together like this only depends on the map phi up to homotopy. In other words, we may regard phi as an element of the mapping class group of the four punctured sphere. It is well known that this group is generated by elementary twists of the punctures, like this one here on the right hand side. So phi acts on Conway tangles by adding twists to the tangle ends. Let me illustrate this in the case of the trivial tangle. If we add a twist to the top two tangle ends of a trivial tangle, we obtain the one crossing tangle shown here on the right hand side. If we add to this a twist on the right, we obtain a two twist tangle. And adding another twist at the top two tangle ends gives us a three, uh, three crossing tangle. Tangles obtained this way are called rational tangles. A tangle is rational if it can be obtained from a trivial tangle by applying some element phi of the mapping class group. In other words, by adding twists to the tangle ends. We can now change our perspective on gluing the two trivial tangles together. We fix a particular identification map phi and replace one of the two trivial tangles by an arbitrary rational tangle. In other words, we push all the twists of the map phi into one of the two trivial tangles, so it becomes rational. The map that we will fix for the identification of the two Conway spheres is this one here. We will glue the back of the tangle T1 to the front of the tangle T2, and we call the resulting link the union of T1 and T2. Note that this union is commutative. With this, with this notation in place, we can now state the baby theorem for trivial tangles. Let L be the union of a trivial tangle and a rational tangle. Then we claim that the Kavana homology of L is thin if and only if its Knopfler homology is thin. Before we come to the proof of this statement, I first want to address the following question. How many rational tangles are there? Can we classify them? The first step towards answering this is the following lemma. There is a 2 to 1 correspondence between, on the one hand, embedded arcs connecting two out of the four marked points on the sphere, and, on the other hand, rational tangles. How do we see this? Well, the proof is essentially this picture here. For every rational tangle, there exists a disk which separates the two tangle strands. Its boundary is an embedded circle in the sphere, 
which separates the two pairs of punctures. And each pair of punctures is connected by an arc which is unique up to homotopy. Conversely, the tangle is obtained from these arcs by pushing them into the three ball. So indeed, we get a two to one correspondence. Next, we consider a certain planar cover of the four punctured sphere, which I will now describe. Here on the right hand side, I have drawn the sphere as the plane plus a point at infinity. I have added four parametrizing arcs that connect the four punctures and that divide the sphere into two faces, the front, which is shaded, and the back. On the left hand side, I've drawn the planar cover and to illustrate what the covering map looks like, I've drawn the checkerboard coloring, which indicates the pre-images of the front and back faces of the sphere. Another way to think of this cover is the following. First, consider the twofold branched cover of the sphere, branched at the four marked points. This gives us a torus. The plane here on the left is the universal cover of this torus, and the integer lattice points correspond precisely to the four marked points on the sphere. This covering space will also play an important role in the next talk. Now, having translated the question about the classification of rational tangles into a question about embedded arcs on the four punctured sphere, let us now consider lifts of such arcs. Here is an example. As we can see, the endpoints of such a lift necessarily lie on the integer lattice points. Also, it is easy to see that any such lift is homotopic to a straight line in this covering space. And that's because the arcs are embedded um, in the sphere. So we see that every rational tangle determines a straight line connecting two integer lattice points. And conversely, any such line also determines a rational tangle. Now, if you follow this correspondence through carefully, you can prove the following result of John Conway, which says that rational tangles are classified by the rational projective line. For example, here is the rational tangle corresponding to the line of slope two thirds. We now introduce the following notation. We write Q sub P over Q for the rational tangle corresponding to the slope P over Q. And we can now restate the baby theorem for the trivial tangle as follows. If L is the union of the trivial tangle, i.e. the rational tangle of slope infinity, and some arbitrary rational tangle of slope P over Q, then the Kavanaugh homology of L is thin, if and only if its not flow homology is thin. The proof of this is straightforward. We distinguish two cases. If the slope of the second tangle is not the infinity slope, then it is easy to see that the link L is alternating. So by the theorem from earlier, both the Kavanaugh homology and HFK hat are thin. If, on the other hand, the slope of the second tangle is equal to the infinity slope, then L is the two component unlink and a calculation shows that neither of the two homology theories is thin. Now that we know how to prove the baby theorem for rational tangles, let us modify the problem once more. Given any Conway tangle T and some slope P over Q, let T of P over Q denote the rational filling of T along that slope, that is, the union of T with the rational tangle of slope minus P over Q. The sign here in the slope is just a matter of conventions. Then we define the space of Hegor Fleur thin rational fillings of T as the space of slopes P over Q for which the not Fleur homology of the link T of P over Q is thin. And similarly, we define the space of Kovanov thin rational fillings of T. As a reminder, these definitions depend, at least a priori, on the coefficients. We work over the field of two elements, and from now on, I will drop this from the notation. Let's look at some examples. The proof of the baby theorem for the trivial tangle tells us that the space of thin rational fillings of the trivial tangle is the whole rational projective line minus a single point, namely infinity. <laughs> 
And this is true for both Kovanov and knot flow homology. Here are some more examples. The space of thin rational fillings of the 2 minus 3 pretzel tangle is equal to the half open interval from minus 2 to infinity. Remarkably, this does not depend on the link homology theory. The figure here on the right of the tangle diagram is supposed to be a depiction of this interval. For example, the rational filling along the blue slope is thin, but the rational filling along the red slope is not. The space of thin fillings can also be an open interval, as this example here illustrates. Again, this does not depend on the link homology theory. This holds for both Kovanov and Knopfler homology. Finally, here is an example which exhibits a very different behavior. The tangle is the quotient of a strong inversion on the figure 8 knot, and for this tangle, the space of thin fillings is just a single point. But again, the space seems to be independent of which homology theory you use. More generally, my collaborators and I show the following about the spaces of thin rational fillings. For all Conway tangles, they are one of the following. The spaces can be empty. For example, you can get this by stacking two copies of the tangle from example 3 on top of each other. The spaces can also be single points. See example 3. The spaces can potentially be two points. This is the only case for which we currently do not know any example. In fact, we expect that there are no such examples, but we cannot rule them out at the moment. Fourth, um, the spaces of thin fittings can also be intervals. They can be open, see the second example. They can be half open, see the first example. But there are also examples for which we obtain closed intervals. And finally, the spaces can also be everything minus a point. See the rational tangle, but there are also more interesting examples um, with this behavior. We also prove a theorem B. This theorem says that given two Conway tangles T1 and T2, for which the interiors of the spaces of thin rational fittings give all of QP1, then the union of T1 and T2 has thin knot flow homology. So in other words, once we know theta of T1 and theta of T2, that is, once we know how the tangles behave under rational fittings, then we often know enough to certify thinness of the unions of these two tangles. Theorems A and B are very reminiscent of results about L-space filling slopes for three manifolds with torus boundary due to Jake and Sarah Rasmussen and Jonathan Hansman, Jake Rasmussen and Liam Watson. The only difference is that the endpoint behavior here is richer. If our spaces of slopes are intervals, they can be open, closed, or they can also be half open. In their setting, if the spaces are intervals, then there are always closed intervals. We actually prove a more general statement than theorem B. Our more general statement gives an exact criterion for thinness. However, this criterion is more technical, precisely because of the richer endpoint behavior of the thin filling spaces. If you are interested in the more general result, I refer you to this theorem here in the paper. I want to conclude by pointing out to you the, what I find, remarkable fact that theorems A and B hold for both Kovanov and Knopfler homology. As we shall see in the second talk, this similarity is not a coincidence, but it lies at the very center of the proofs of both theorems. Thank you very much for listening, and enjoy the rest of the conference. If you have questions or comments, feel free to drop by during my office hours, or contact me via email.